Hi everyone and welcome to this electronics course. Today we are going to study the operational amplifier. This amazing circuit is present in almost all our electronic devices and it is hard to design a circuit that doesn't make use of it. So, what is an operational amplifier? It is a very complicated circuit that contains no less than 20 transistors and which is designed in order to have a very simple behavior. So, we don't need to know what is happening inside of it, we only need to know what it does. A basic op-amp has a so-called non-inverting input, V in plus, which is indicated on the circuit symbol by a plus sign, an inverting input V in minus indicated by a minus sign, an output V out, and two terminals for the power supply, Vs plus and Vs minus. Very often, the power supply terminals are not shown on the symbol because they are irrelevant for the circuit analysis. We will see that op-amps can perform various operations when they are associated with a few passive components, such as resistors, capacitors, and diodes. They can add voltages, subtract, multiply, divide, differentiate, integrate, exponentiate, and do many more operations and that's where they got their name from. A basic op-amp is designed in such a way that it has a very large input impedance, a low output impedance, and a large open loop gain. We are going to see what this means. The task of the op-amp is very simple. For given input voltages V in plus and V in minus, it tries to output a voltage equal to the difference between those voltages multiplied by the open loop gain AOL. That's why we say that the op-amp is a differential amplifier. It amplifies a difference in potentials. Now, what do I mean by it tries? I simply mean that it can do it only if the resulting output voltage is not too large. The op-amp cannot output a voltage that is greater in absolute value than some saturation voltage. This saturation voltage depends on the supplied voltage. For example, for an LM741 op-amp supplied with plus and minus 15 volts, the saturation voltage is 13.9 volts. If the voltage calculated with the above equation is too large, then the op-amp will simply output the saturation voltage. This gives us the two different regimes in which the op-amp can work. We say that the regime is linear if the output voltage is proportional to the difference in the input voltages, otherwise the op-amp is in the saturated regime. We can summarize this behavior of the op-amp with this graph that shows the output voltage as a function of the difference in input voltages. The oblique region of the graph, which has a slope equal to the open loop gain AOL, is the linear region, whereas the two regions where the graph is flat are the saturated regions. Now, remember that we said that the open loop gain is large, typically 100,000 for the LM741 open. So the oblique line is actually almost vertical and the linear region is extremely small. Now, in order to analyze circuits with op-amp, we almost always use the ideal op-amp assumption because it is very accurate. The input impedance of an ideal op-amp is infinite, the output impedance is zero, and the open loop gain is infinite. This has two direct consequences that make the circuit analysis simple. The infinite input impedance implies that the currents through the inverting and non-inverting inputs are zero, and the infinite open loop gain implies that the two input voltages are equal 
when the regime is linear. Indeed, the output voltage has a finite value. If the linear regime applies, then this finite value is the product of the infinite open loop gain with the difference in input voltage. Thus, this difference has to be zero, so the input voltages have to be equal. We are going to see shortly that using the equation V in plus equals V in minus is totally equivalent to and much easier than using the equation V out equals AOL times the difference between V in plus and V in minus. So, before we start solving circuits with op-amps, the question that arises is how do we know whether the op-amp in a given circuit works in the linear regime or in the saturated regime. The rule of thumb is that the regime is probably linear if and only if part of the output voltage is fed back to the inverting input. Let us explain why with the two following examples. In the circuit on the left, the two resistors form a voltage divider, so the inverting input is maintained at a constant voltage, which is a fraction of the voltage U. This voltage has no relationship with the arbitrary voltage applied at the non-inverting input. Thus, the difference in input voltages is very likely to be non-zero, and when multiplied by the infinite open loop gain, results in a saturation. For the circuit on the right, let us notice first that the inverting input is now above the non-inverting input. It is common to switch the two inputs like this when the non-inverting input is grounded. Here again, the two resistors form a voltage divider and the voltage applied to the inverting input lies between V in and V out. Suppose that the voltage on the inverting input is positive. Then the difference V in plus minus V in minus is negative and as a result the op-amp is going to try to output a large negative voltage. This will pull down the voltage applied to the inverting input until it becomes nearly equal to the zero voltage on the non-inverting input. In other words, because of the feedback the op-amp does whatever is needed in order to bring the two input voltages to the same values for which the regime is linear. We are now ready to solve circuits with op-amps. Let us start with the so-called comparator circuit. This is the simplest op-amp circuit since the op-amp is not associated with any other components. Since there is no feedback from the output to the inverting input, we can conclude that the op-amp works in the saturated regime. For this case, we actually don't have anything to solve because we already saw what the solution is. The op-amp saturates and the output voltage is positive if the non-inverting input voltage is greater than the inverting input voltage, negative otherwise. So, as its name suggests, this circuit compares the two input voltages and tells us which one is greater. The next simplest circuit is the so-called voltage follower. The first thing to notice is that there is a feedback from the output to the inverting input, so this time the regime is linear. Whenever the regime is linear, there are mainly two ways to determine what the output is as a function of the input. The complicated way and the easy way. Since we are reasonable, we will systematically use the easy way to analyze the upcoming circuits, but it is very instructive to use the complicated way at least once, because it allows us to acquire a deep understanding of why an op-amp behaves the way it does. So, let's start with the complicated way, and don't worry, it is actually pretty simple. Since the circuit works in the linear regime, we start from the corresponding equation that gives the value of the output voltage. Remember, the op-amp is precisely designed to output the voltage given by this expression. Now, since the input of the circuit is directly connected to the non-inverting input, and the output is directly connected to the inverting input, 
we conclude that Vn plus is equal to Vn and Vn minus is equal to V out. So we can take these two expressions and substitute them into the first equation. If we do this, we obtain an equation with the single unknown V out. We can solve this equation and express V out as a constant fraction times V in. We could stop here, but remember that the open loop gain is assumed to be infinite, so the fraction reduces to 1, which leads us to the final result. The output voltage is just equal to the input voltage. In other words, the output voltage follows the input voltage. You may think that such a circuit is totally useless. It is actually one of the most useful circuits. We will see some concrete examples of application. But let us now see how we can arrive to the same result with the easy method. Remember, we mentioned earlier that the equation for the output voltage in the linear regime is equivalent to saying that the voltages at the inverting and the non-inverting inputs are equal. This statement already includes the ideal op-amp assumption for which AOL is infinite. So if we substitute V in plus equals V in and V in minus equals V out, we directly arrive to the result V out equals V in. We have now everything we need to analyze op-amp circuits and this will be the subject of part two.